came to me and she talked to me about the pain and she sort of took her finger and pointed right to where the pain was, I mean, it's a classic location for a superior cluneal nerve entrapment. The patient goes and, and gets these nerves put to sleep temporarily with local anesthetics, similar to what you'd, you'd have at the dentist if you're having your teeth worked on. It gives you a, a three, four, six hour, however, however long it lasts in that particular patient, but it gives them a break from the pain. And if, if that takes the pain away, then it, you've basically definitively proved that the pain is due to a problem with the superior cluneal nerves and not coming from a spine issue. up taking her to the operating room and, and going and finding these uh, superior cluneal nerve branches. And you really got to know what you're doing in the operating room because there's a, a, a quite a large variation in terms of how many of these nerves there are, primarily because of, of what level they branch at. So you got to get all the branches of all the nerves. You find the nerves and you disconnect them and then you take the proximal ends of the nerves and bury them down in the paraspinous musculature which prevents the formation of a painful neuroma and she's had great relief from her you know mysterious low back pain Most of these peripheral nerve problems that are um, poorly understood, there's no real data to know how many people are walking around out there with superior cluneal nerve entrapments or injuries to superior cluneal nerves. Uh, and all that would translate into low back pain.